In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my mother of pearl ring with beads. First thing I like to do when I'm making these rings is get my serrated bezel out and start cutting out how much silver I'll need for the beads. The serrated bezel helps because you can measure how many notches and keep the size of the beads really consistent from ring to ring. I like to use a charcoal block as a soft charcoal and I make divots using the end of a paintbrush, as you can see. You don't have to have a soft charcoal block, but it helps you to keep the roundness all the way around and not get flat bottoms on your beads. Plus, the charcoal reflects the heat back into the bead and kind of helps things stay warm. You don't want to use too high of a temperature when you're doing this, because if the charcoal block, especially if this is going cold, like you haven't used it yet during the day, heating it up too fast could cause the block to split, which I learned the hard way. Funnily enough, I had watched a video about how important it is to bind your charcoal block. The day I split my last charcoal block and I didn't bind it, and I, I learned my lesson, so now I, I bind all my charcoal blocks with some annealed iron wire. Next thing we're going to do is take some bezel wire, whatever size you use, and file it flush so that when you go to solder the wire together, it'll meet. After you file the first end, you're going to wrap it around your stone. And wherever there is overlap, I use a razor blade to mark the spot. Then I can cut it and file it flush again. Once you have it so that both sides are fairly flush, um, I like to put it together, make sure it fits tight around the stone, and then I will take that bezel, get the seam so that it lines up and then I close it with parallel pliers, add some flux, and now you're ready to solder. It doesn't take much heat to get that solder to flow there. After you solder it, and quench it. I go around with the bezeling tool here, burnishing tool, and make sure it conforms to the shape of the stone before I outline um, the amount of silver I'm going to cut for the base. It's always, always good to be generous. You don't want to cut too little. It's easier to uh, file off if you cut too much. Earlier on in the video, you might have seen writing on my bench pin. Uh, it said Hallmark, you might have wondered why, and that is to remind myself to stamp the 925 quality indicator and my initials into the base of the setting before I solder the bezel to it. Um, if the ring is big enough, I always like to put it on the bottom instead of stamping it into the ring, just because I like to keep the ring as whole as possible and not knock it out of shape with the hammer. So you're going to add your flux, put the bezel on there, make sure you have enough space at the top and bottom for your beads if you're adding that, and on the sides for your rope. Now, the mistake I made here was I did not have it close enough to the edge, so I had to bump it before I could get the solder to flow there. It's always good to heat from the bottom when you can. Alright, so now we're going to add our beads. This can be a hassle because when you heat the flux, it does bubble up. And these are small beads, so they can very easily 
get knocked out of place just from the bubbles themselves. So you always want to have a pair of tweezers on hand to put them back. Um, another thing that you're going to notice here is these lighter beads, especially, like I said, um, they want to follow the heat and the solder. So they, they kind of get pulled out of the way even when you're placing the solder. So you just have to kind of push them back to where you want it to go. Yeah. There, you see that? But then you just push them back and the solder should be where you needed it and stick there. Same thing on the other side. Fewer beads this way. It's always easier to do this bottom side. Now I'm going to get the rope ready, uh, file the side flush, measure it, and clip it so that it fits between the beads. File it if you made it too long, which again, it's always better to go too long than too short. And similar sort of thing, the flux is going to make this one a bubble out of the way. Uh, just push it back and solder on. Then you're gonna cut away the excess um, silver from the sides using either shears, or in this case, I'm just using some ultra flush cutters. And then file the X extra there because you're not gonna be able to get close enough to really get a smooth, clean thing. And then I'm using a triangle file to get in between the grooves of the beads. And then I take what I did not get and hit it with this grinder very carefully so that you don't hit the rope and flatten the rope so that it doesn't look like rope anymore. Get the bottom so that's smooth. Nice curve to it. All right, next I'm gonna measure out some nine gauge half round wire for the band. Um, I have the sizes marked out to a general idea so I know a size seven is, you know, 59 millimeters or, or whatever it is I have it written down so that I can just quickly cut that and get it close enough. I file an angle to each end. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's nice to get it started. hit the sides of it with the grinding wheel again just to take off any uncomfortable sharp edges from the commercial manufacturing process. All right, form it around the mandrel. Get the sides lined up so it's nice and flush and round. Then I check the balance it's not quite balanced on this side, so I'm going to hit it again with the file. You can do this however you're most comfortable. I've found that going down, downward motions helps. Now we're going to attach the band to the base, and it's critical to save yourself some frustration to have some third hand reverse action tweezers to hold it in place while you solder because otherwise it's just too easy to move it and you're going to be really frustrated. So after you pickle it, which I didn't show the process here, there's two things you can do. You can either use liver of sulfur or I'm using a commercial oxidizer called Winox to blacken this before polishing. Um, I have a brush dedicated to that which is important because the oxidizer will rust your your materials. I use a little bit of Zam on this soft muslin wheel and use a light touch to go around and actually go in both directions for the beads and the rope just to get it from every angle when possible. I do the inside with some steel wool.
This particular mother of pearl piece is fairly shallow. It doesn't have a huge concave, so I'm going to have to put some sawdust in there. I usually put sawdust in there no matter what because it helps to level the stone and it also protects against impact so you're not just instantly cracking the stone. You have a little bit of cushion. It's not much, but it helps. I use this razor blade again to kind of level it out. Put some glue on the bottom, pop it in there. Then we use our burnishing tool to close the bezel. I am very cautious when I'm closing these because if you don't have enough solder, if you're using too much force, it could be easy to pop one of those beads off. Thank you so much for watching. We're just getting started here, so make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any future silversmithing content.